going on everybody this here is the honda's 2020th year anniversary they just released some new parts on the tokyo and auto salon and everything a hideous front bumper some new suspension they said they made some audio upgrades i haven't seen any of those because i haven't been to tokyo uh what surprises me is there still isn't a whole lot of information on youtube about s2000s upgrading them fixing them uh if you want to go to mexico I mean, there's plenty of videos of S2000 smoking the dog shit out of GTRs and Corvettes and all that other fun stuff, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, maintenance or building an engine, upgrading some stuff, there isn't a whole lot of info. So I'm going to try to do some stuff online as I'm rebuilding the engine and uh, shaving my bay, redoing the entire suspension, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to try to video most of it and put it on youtube for you guys to watch hope you enjoy if not i don't care I still build my car for me stay tuned so the first thing i'm going to do is take the uh crank pulley off underdrive pulley whatever you want to call it so this is the one for my supercharger setup that's why it's got the extra pulley on there it looks weird to you and this is the honda crank removal or crank pulley removal tool i got from i think o'reilly's i'm not sure Honda's got a different one in the manual, but it probably costs 500 bucks, so I don't have that one. Um, so you put that on there, you're going to hold it with a ratchet, that's not the right size as you can see. You're going to hold it with a ratchet there, and then you're actually going to turn the bolt um, with a, a thousand ogadogas because it's on there freaking tight. But uh, I'll show you guys how to do it. So as I was saying, crank pulley tool. You know, hold the crank in place like that. You need a 19 millimeter socket. You can see it. I can't see what I'm doing. There you go. Yeah, 19 millimeter socket. And you're gonna turn it downwards, all right? It's usually pretty stiff. So if you have a breaker bar, breaker bars usually help. Yep. So when the breaker bar doesn't give you enough ugga duggas, you gotta hit it with your purse. You ready? Hold on, gotta get a good hit, a manly one. Let's see if that worked. Well, damn. It does work. So when your crank bolt is loose, you don't want to take it completely out. All right, get some form of a uh, pulley remover. This isn't actually a pulley remover, but my pulley is not in there tight because I just slapped it on to show you guys what's going on. So uh, mine isn't going to take much force at all. And it sounds like Ninjas are attacking me in my driveway. My son's out here with his scooter and his bike, so he's having a good time, living his best life. All right, so as you can see, you put it around the pulley, you leave the bolt in there, start putting tension on it, and my pulley's backing right out because it was just slapped on there. Bolt out pulley off it's not gonna come off that easy but you get the idea so to take off your timing chain cover you've got bolts up here there should be an idler pulley here that's your crank position sensor you got to take out all these bolts here and then you have to take off the oil pan so I've already removed all that as you can see there's no oil pan timing chain cover uh, it's gonna take a little bit of force I took a pry bar and pried it back here at the two corners because it's got RTV or Honda Bond all over the lips here and here there's a gasket. Should be RTV all through here. So it's not gonna be the easiest to come off, but you get the idea. So this is your timing chain. I've already removed my timing chain tensioner and your oil pump chain is down here. It's a smaller one. So you pull off this gear here, boom and I have direct access to my timing chain. 
I got some slack on it because the timing chain tensioner isn't in there. Your timing chain tensioner goes right up here and what it does is it puts pressure on your uh, guide right there. So when it's fully extended, it puts pressure on your chain, no slack right there. When your timing chain tensioner is going bad, there's slack and your chain slapping and that's what you don't want. What's up, dude? This is my son, Parker. Say hi, Parker. Hello. Yeah, this is weird. Good, good thing. So I already have my valve cover off. You should be able to do that by yourself. I got faith in you. Next thing I want to do is take off the, uh, take out the cams. So I got to pull all these bolts out up here. All of these. Uh, the reason these are longer is those are the bolts for the valve cover. Your valve cover actually bolts down right there to the top. That's what holds it on. So I got to take out all these bolts. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up all my valves. Loosen these up. Doesn't matter how much, as long as you have free play. So I want to loosen the valves to make sure there's no tension. So look at this sweet tool here. You can get it at AutoZone or Rallies for 10, 15 bucks. I don't know what it is. I've had this one forever. But it shows you where the bolt is and it allows you to line the screwdriver up there. So what I want to do is I just want to loosen and I'll use it to the same time. There we go. So I want to loosen this bolt like so. Now that it's loose, it doesn't take much force at all. I just loosen up the valve. So now there's no tension on the valve. I can move it up and down. Good to go. Right now, uh, cylinder one is top dead center. So when I work on LS engines, the LS push rods, you gotta make sure they're all measured up the same. So I have this tool here, I just pop it down in there. It's too long, it touches the top of the piston. I put the crank back in just so I can rotate it left and right. But I move the crank left and right, and this rod will go up and down because it's sitting on top of the piston. And right now it's at its highest point, which is TDC, top dead center. Makes sense, right? I had to move the show inside because it started sprinkling. So I got all the cam cap bolts loose. So if you see on there, they have numbers and that's the sequence they go in. One, two, three, it's pretty self-explanatory. You wanna keep them in that order. Don't pull the bolts out of them. Just take them off, you pull the bolts out. You gotta remember which one has the long stud for the valve cover and which one is just the bolt. It's a huge pain in the butt. So just leave them in. I need you to know. This balance. Nope. That's so good. There we go. Stack them in that order. Should be good to go. So now I can pull my cams out. And now you should be able to pretty much pull the cams right out. This is the cam. I've never taken a cam shaft apart on an S2000. That's your good thing gear. And here's the gear. I'm gonna take the gear off. That bolt there, and there's an Allen bolt there, but we're not doing that today. Don't need to. So now that I've got all the tension, next thing I need to do is remove this bolt right here. So it's a eight millimeter Allen. Be careful when you remove it. You gotta take it all the way out. There is a gasket on it. And if you lose that gasket, and you mess it up in any way, it will leak oil out of there. There's a washer on the back of it that if you don't have your timing cover off, you don't wanna drop. Cause it'll go down and you'll have to pull your timing cover off. So try to be as careful as possible. You can see the washer right there. I'm gonna grab, Put my phone down and grab it. 
even though my timing cover is standing off. So now I have all the slack off the gear there. I can pull the chain off, slide it to the back, slide it to the side. Whatever. But I have enough slack on it, I can pull my gear completely out just like that. That's a little washer there I'm talking about. Oh. This side has a washer, I'm sorry. There's a washer. And you don't want to drop that down there because I'll have to move the timer cover to get it. My chain dropped, but I don't care because I'm replacing the chain. Take my chain. timing chain cover back off. And I can take my timing chain completely off. There we go. I should have to remove that, but I have everything else removed, so it's too easy. That one right there is my oil pump chain. I don't have any slack on it. I'm going to replace it anyways. Because I've got another one. Replace that. You remove the tensioner here. And then you just pop it on there. I probably won't do a video of that because it's pretty self-explanatory. But, uh, yeah. That's the part number for the timing chain. That's your oil pump chain. I got them off eBay from a reputable seller. But I didn't buy, you know, $20 eBay timing chain. It's on the internals of my engine. I absolutely am not going to skimp on anything, especially something as important as that. You snap your timing chain, piston flies up, kisses a valve, and you have to rebuild the entire engine. And I don't want to do it for a third time, so. I've already installed the timing chain, made sure I was still at top dead center. Of course, I'll verify it again before I put any of the gears up top in the head, but there's another chain. I looked at all the guides and everything. They look new. The engine was rebuilt about 5,000 miles ago, but I don't trust people, so I wanted to come through and verify it anyways. 90 bucks for my peace of mind. I'd say it's well worth it. Well worth it. I gotta clean up all the silicone here. This RTV crap. So I make sure I get a good coat when I put mine on there. So I'll do that. And, uh, I'll start taking video again when I go to assemble the head. So getting the sprocket in is a pain in the ass. I really don't have a foolproof method. Put the chain behind it. You just move it down there, pinch it down, pull the chain up, so it slides down. You can get it in there. Uh, I got the washer, so I got to put it in there. It goes in the front after I get the timing chain on top. Have this gear here. I will put it on there and then slide the pin back in there. I got it done in there. This is the washer that goes in the front. If you don't get it on properly, or when you're pulling it out, if you don't have the timing chain off, and you drop it, that's what happens. Huge pain in the ass if you don't have the timing cover off. Luckily, okay, I do. So this is the fun part about the S2K. I'm trying to get it timed right. Not a lot of margin for error because of the timing chain. So on that top dead center, take all the slack out of the chain. I got the gear up here. What I want to do, which is not essential to be honest with you, you can time it without lining these marks up. But you want these two marks right here, the timing gear, to be lined up precisely with the valve cover, like so. So you have to adjust your chain and don't put it on this top sprocket here until it's lined up correctly. So I've cleared up all the silicone around here so I can put new silicone on there, on the bond, whatever you want to call it. Still tapped at center. Put the trigger back on there so your uh, crank position sensor actually measures these ticks right here. Bad crank position sensor and you won't be able to start it or uh, you'll get check engine light when you run the code, it'll say all four cylinders misfiring. So the more you know, right? So I still have the time, um, time chain tension in there. But when the chain is tight, see that tick mark right there on the gear, timing gear, see that tick mark right there? Didn't get any better than that. So we are good to go. I can reinstall the timing chain cover, put more Honda bond around it there, up here, there, here. All the way around. So we're good to go. New oil pump chain, 
new timing chain. Hope it's good. Starting the can is super easy. Back here where your cam trigger is, you want to slide the back end first very gently and then slowly follow it up here, walk it up. So this is what it looks like when it's timed. Those two gears right there, you see the, the hash marks? They should be facing each other. And then the timing gear here, it does not have to be perfectly aligned with the head. It should be, but as long as your cam gears here are lined up perfectly and you are still at top dead center, you are good to go. Of course, I'm gonna check everything one more time before I bolt it all back up, but this is what right looks like. If I put the timing cover back on, which I will in a second, that'll sit at top dead center, and then those two will be facing each other. We'll be good to go. Make sure your gears actually align in there as well. I don't know if you can see them. But if they don't align properly, and you try to start the car, they'll shear off the teeth. I'll show you what it looks like if you'd like, or you can check out my Instagram because uh, that happened to me like six months ago. So I've got the cams in there, good to go. Everything's top dead center, timed well. When you put the cam caps back on there, this is the sequence you're supposed to go in. I'll put a picture, freeze frame it so you know, just in case. But that's the sequence they go in. It only goes up to uh, 16 foot pounds of torque. So it doesn't take, you know, 85 Ugga Duggas. 16 foot pounds of torque, gun over torque them because the head is aluminum. Got the cam clips back on there. You can see the sequence, five, four, three, two, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure you don't take the bolts out. You don't want to figure out which one goes where. It's playing the butt. All right, so you start here on number three, and uh, you tighten them to 16 foot pounds of torque. I've already tightened and torqued this one. So I'm not gonna overly do it, but it does not take much at all. I'm pretty sure my son, who's five, can do this. 16 foot pounds of torque. So just go through in the sequence. Like I said, I'll post a picture so you know exactly what it is. Let's come back to my head. The cam gears aren't moving now. They're lined up. I put a little tension on the chain. Boom, perfect. Timing gears lined up. No slack in the chain whatsoever. If you have slack in the chain, it's more difficult to time it because you're gonna have some play. And then these hash marks here are not gonna line up no matter what but that's what it's supposed to look like.